All right. Yep, yeah, there I am. All right, perfect. Uh, hello, I'm back again. Put this down there. Um, I guess I'm back for the normal studying, reading Foucault. Um, oh. throw that up there. Oh, I'm like really far away, am I? For the thumbnail. Um, so I guess the same spiel as before. I am reading uh, the lectures on the will to know by Michel Foucault, which is the first lectures he gave the Collège de France or Collège de France. Um, and I've been reading through the past couple weeks, I guess. Well, four streams, I think. I think, and I've been just—it's mostly for my own personal study. I've got some notes here. That I've been taking because I want to, I guess, study like Foucault a bit more in depth. Um, and I also figured, well, why not stream it too? And I had to rearrange my setup. Let me move this over a little bit. Uh, you can see a stuffed rabbit that's hanging in there in the corner there. I had to like re take my setup down each day, so it's a bit. Have to get everything rearranged. But anyways, um, so I guess for the next like 40 minutes or so, I'm just going to be reading out this book and writing some interesting things down. Um, anything else? I sh There's a couple of things, I guess, channel, this channel, um, housekeeping things. I don't know, announcements. I don't know what they are. But um, basically, so I've made a video for the at Namu stuff. That was something I was doing on here. Um, I did like the evocation and the start stuff. And so I've been working through, there's a bunch of indexes. There's like 10 indexes, I think. And each index has like 50 uh, pages, I guess, in it. Um, like website pages. So some of them are probably like equivalent to like books, basically. Um, but... You know, I've wanted to get more into that and do stuff with that. You know, I know people like it. So I recorded, I've gone to the first index and re started recording part one. And so I finished that. I finished making the video. I like to have, you know, some thing like video going on while, while I'm talking, you know, even if it's like really simple or like, you know, just some nature shots or something like that. Just to have like something to watch, I guess. But um, it's kind of hard after because like you have the start sections, like the first couple or the first like dozen, and those are fun because there's just enough that I can like do something with it. But when you get to like the index and the evocation, it's just pages and pages of like book chapters, like quotes from books and quotes from like the Bible and stuff, and it's just like really long. And it's hard to do anything with it because it's just like, um, like I said, it's really long. There's not a whole much like inspiration to get from the passages, um, or at least not that I can do with my very limited skills of video editing and like, you know, I'm kind of limited to what I can get and do. Um, I, you know, I did what I could. And so that's a video should come out tomorrow. I should publish that tomorrow or Saturday. Um, but it's done. I said to listen to it again to make sure like we'll watch it. Just make sure like everything looks okay. Um, you'll get to see the very simple animations I did for it. I downloaded an animation software for like something else, but I thought, well, why not make some, you know, I guess time filler of animation so you can see the very simple shapes moving around that I did um, just to like practice and start out test it out and then so that's going to come out and I'm going to try and do more of those obviously I will probably never finish that because there's just so much content but you know I did this so we'll see and some of them are like pretty short that I can do and even just like make a normal like not really a video with it but you know I don't know so I'll do some more of those probably until it just gets kind of boring. And then I also, 
have recorded some CCRU writings. So there's like a, on their website, they have a bunch, on the CCRU website, they have a bunch of like essays that didn't make it into the book. So I've been going through those and I've recorded a couple of them. They're pretty short, so they're like nice, quick things to do. But I just have to edit them for mistakes and like listen through again to make sure I, you know, there wasn't any major mistakes or anything. Um, so those should be coming up probably next week. I'll probably sit down tomorrow or even today after this and um, <clears throat> edit them and, you know, make videos and so that. So those are the two things. So those should be coming out. Um, oh, man, I'm thirsty. I'm actually going to move this forward. It always feels like an awkward place with my mic microphone here. But anyways, so that was just a quick um, things that are upcoming. So I know like people like the CCRE writings, like the Etnamu stuff. And I don't want you to think that like, oh, I'm not doing that anymore. I am. The Etnamu stuff, I don't know. It's kind of like on that, like I said, it's like hard to like, I want to make it more interesting than just a normal like audiobook of me just talking. But it's kind of hard because it's long passages like this one that's coming out I probably ended up cutting out like at least a third of what's on the web page because it's just like whole chapters from the bible and it's just not very interesting because I don't think it is it's was boring to record and I imagine it's you know just like so much that like it's kind of boring um so I kept like what was interesting or like what I could do interesting things with at least like video wise but at NAMI stuff, I don't know. I'm going to try and keep making it up, but keep doing stuff, but it's kind of like a... Um, there needs to be... I need to find something to do. Like, to do with it that's more than what the website pr can provide, I guess. But anyways, that's not what's important here. Got two bookmarks in here. What is important is we are talking about the will to know, and we're talking about Nietzsche, who is a very important figure for Foucault. Uh, so much so that he has an entire lecture on Nietzsche. Talking about Nietzsche's conception of the will to know. Where I was watching a YouTube video. The last one and I wrote it down. Theory and Philosophy is the name of the YouTube channel. Theory and Philosophy. That's his name. Did like four videos on the lectures of the will to know. And so I was watching that. Also... And I found it really interesting in that like relationship between Nietzsche's will to power and Foucault's will to know. Or like how what Foucault is taking from Nietzsche, I think, and like molding his own, like incorporating into his sort of like, I guess, philosophical system. Um in a sense of a connection between knowledge and power. So that knowledge is an aspect of power and that knowledge is used <clears throat> to sort of wield power, I guess, or have power over something, which is interesting. So I think that's like in this lecture. And we had last week, oh man, my voice is getting a bit, I know I say it like every like time we do this, but like my voice sometimes starts giving out. I was recording an audiobook this morning and like the very end, I was getting all gravelly voice and it was rough. So we'll see how far I can go in this. Hopefully I at least want to get like, you know, like a cup, some in here, but we'll see. We're talking, so we're talking about Nietzsche and we didn't get too far in the last one. Just like a couple quotes and like what Nietzsche thinks knowledge is. <clears throat> so I'm actually starting on, in this book, I'm starting on page 205 about halfway down. Uh, knowledge is opposed to utility for it is a game which involves giving way to the for and against but this game only succeeds in transposing the malice appearance of intellectual combat of rivalry in daybreak paragraph 429 daybreak is a name of one of Nietzsche's books in Daybreak, paragraph 429, knowledge appears as renunciation of the happiness of a sturdy and vigorous illusion. This renunciation now 
has such charm for us that we cannot renounce it. This malice is what will go behind the surface of things to seek out the secret, to try to extract an essence behind the appearance, a power behind the elusive flickering, a mastery. And to do this, one employs all the means of cunning and seduction, of violence and gentleness towards a thing. But it is also what can recognize that there is still only appearance in this secret finally broken open, that there is no ontological foundation, and that man himself, who knows, is still and all is still and always appearance. Knowledge is not the operation that destroys appearance, either by opposing it to being either by opposing it to being as Plato does, or by unmasking the object equals X hidden behind it. Nor is it a futile effort that, nor is it a futile effort that always remains in appearance, in the style of Schopenhauer. It is what indefinitely constitutes a newness of appearance, in the breach of appearance. Knowledge is indeed what goes beyond appearance, what maliciously destroys it, puts it to the question, and extracts its secrets. A knowledge that remained at the level, a knowledge that remained at the level of what is given its appearance would not be knowledge at all. Against the welcoming mildness of a phenomenon, it is necessary to set the murderous relentlessness of knowledge. It is necessary to set the murderous relentlessness of knowledge. But in this work, this is never rewarded with access to being or the essence, but gives rise to new appearances sets them against one another and beyond one another. Hence a certain number of consequences. One, or A, instinct, interest, play, and struggle are not, are not that from which are not that from which knowledge tears itself away. This is not the shameful motive, the constraining and quirky forgotten origin. This is its permanent, perpetual, inevitable, necessary support. We will find it again in the sciences, and it will raise the problem of aestheticism, of objective knowledge. And B, knowledge will always be perspective, incomplete. It will never close on itself. It will never be adequate to its object. It will always be separated from a thing in itself, but neither in a historical sense in which perspectives intersect in the very essence of the thing that is both the law and plane of all these perspectives, nor in Kant's sense when he says that knowledge is limited. Because for Kant, what prevents us from knowing is both knowledge itself, its form, and therefore nothing external or foreign to it, and the limit of knowledge, what is no longer knowledge. For Nietzsche, what prevents us from knowing is the very thing that forms the support, root, and dynamism of knowledge its force and not its form, instinct, malice, greed for knowledge, desire. But what both prevents and constitutes knowledge is something altogether different from knowledge. Why does man not see things? He is himself standing in the way. He conceals things. C. Hence in sum, the two great breaks, in relation to being and in relation to the good, Subheading, there's a subheading, knowing and knowing the tr knowing and knowing the truth. Knowledge was invented, but truth was invented even later. So knowledge was invented, but truth was invented even later. This articulated, this is articulated in several questions. What kind of knowledge would it be that is not, from the outset, knowledge of the truth, or knowledge addressing itself to the truth? or knowledge wanting the truth? What kind, of, what kind of knowledge would it be that does not suspend the truth or put it out of circulation, but is a place where truth emerges in secondary, aleatory, non-essential way? What is the invention of truth? What turn of events made it possible? This question involves what knowledge of truth. This question involves 
what the knowledge of the truth will be. Should it be analyzed as an illusion, or as a will, or as a structure? In other words, is the relation between knowledge and the truth a matter of error, i.e. of untruth, will, or law? What is knowledge when it has become knowledge of the truth? And what happens to truth when it has arisen and found its place in knowledge? Is truth a phase? Will there be an, e will there be an end to truth? Can we imagine or conceive of a new knowledge that would once again be knowledge without truth? Is there a future truth? Is there a future truth or a future without truth? Can we recount? Can we re yeah. Can we recount the history of truth, the fable of truth? Despite superficial, despite superficial analogies, this should be distinguished from a com. Comptian. This should be distinguished from a Comptian or positivist type of history of the sciences. In, positive his in positivist history, truth is not given from the start. Truth is not given from the start. Knowledge seeks the truth for a long time, blind and groping. Truth is given as a result of a history. But the relation finally established between truth and knowledge is assumed from the outset as one that exists by right. Knowledge, knowledge is made to be knowledge of the truth. There is, an or, there, is, yeah. there is an original affiliation between truth and knowledge, and this affiliation is such that truth is the object of knowledge. Knowledge without truth is not true. Knowledge without truth is not true knowledge. Truth is the truth of knowledge. Nietzsche's in, I don't know that word. Nietzsche's insouciance consists in his having unraveled these implications, and having said, truth is added to knowledge later, without knowledge being destined to truth, without truth being the essence of knowledge. I'm, I'm going to write that down. So, I should title this. Nietzsche said, truth <laughs> knowledge is not. And truth It's not the essence of knowledge. So I guess knowledge and truth are being decoupled there. Nietzsche is associated first in saying neither man nor things nor the world are made for knowledge. Knowledge comes after preceded by no complicity, guaranteed by no power. It arrives, emer it arrives, emerging from the altogether different. So knowledge emerges. Later, not part of human nature, basically. Nietzsche doesn't see, I guess, we having some, like, by nature, a desire for, like, knowledge. Or, like, just, just this natural desire to get, or ability to get knowledge, or desire to get knowledge. <clears throat> In contrast to Aristotle, which we read a couple weeks ago, who believed that humans have, by nature, by their nature, have an innate desire to know. He is an associate again. When he says, knowledge is not made for truth, truth arrives unexpectedly, preceded by the not truth, preceded rather by something we cannot say is either true or not false, or not true. 
preceded rather by something that we cannot say is either true or not true, since it, since it is prior to the division specific to truth. The truth emerges from the state of non-acquaintance with a demarcation of the true. And I'm actually going to get a sip of water. I have so many water balls for some reason around here. I got two down there. And I got like a bottle of tea over there. I don't know why I like so much stuff to drink up here. All right. So this is section two. All that was like section one, I guess. Or what it was section one. So this is section two. What is knowledge before truth? Two answers emerge. Two answers emerge through two oppositions established by Nietzsche. A. Nietzsche presents knowledge not linked to truth as pure wanting to know, which is opposed to the schematizations, the simplifications of a knowledge oriented towards truth. So knowledge not linked to truth is pure wanting to know. In 1884, he said, the whole apparatus of knowledge is an... The whole apparatus of knowledge is an apparatus of abstraction and simplification, organized not for knowledge, but for mastery over things. And in 1888, he said, in the formation of reason, logic, and categories, it is need that is decisive, the need not to know, but to sum up, to to schematize in order to understand and foresee. And there's actually end notes. I'm going to just check this out real quick. Was it 1718? So both those quotes are from the Will to Knowledge. Or not, Will to Power, the book Will Will to Power. Knowledge in order to know. And he has two more quotes from him. "To To this will to appearance, simplification, mask, cloak, service, surface, is opposed that sublime inclination of the one who seeks knowledge, that incl- that inclination, that inclination that will take things profoundly multiple in their essence. And second quote is, one person is driven to a clear view by the veneration that the secrets of things inspire in him, the other by indiscretion and malice in the, er- in the interpretation of mysteries. And both those quotes are probably from Will. Uh, actually from somewhere else. So one I think is from Beyond Good and Evil, and the other one is from Daybreak. First one is Beyond Good and Evil, and the other one is Daybreak. We see the possibility opening up, we see the possibility opening up of a knowledge deployed in the space of the secret, of prohibition, of unveiling, of transgression. We are of an audacious morality, linked to malice, to profanation. To this profanation by knowledge for the sake of knowledge is opposed is opposed to good, useful, generous, accommodating knowledge, the knowledge that does good, that is to say, does something other than know. B. Nietzsche puts to work of Nietzsche puts to work other op- Nietzsche puts to work another opposition, the converse, the preceding opposition. A primary and corporeal knowledge prior to any truth and governed entirely by need. It is not a question of knowledge here, but of life, struggle, the hunt, food, and rivalry. All our organs of knowledge and our senses develop only the severance of our perseverance. Develop only the severance. No, yeah. Develop only the service of our preservation and growth. Confronting this knowledge and after it, a secondary and aesthetic now a secondary and aesthetic knowledge is formed. It suppresses the point of view of the body, suspends usefulness, erases partialities and limits, and wants to see everything with an equal eye and without prejudice. Knowledge that wants to be pure. To eliminate to eliminate the will in general to suppress the passions entirely, supposing were possible, what then? Would this not be, 
would this not be to castrate the intellect? Here the opposition is here the opposition is asserted between a real knowledge immediately connected up to life, to need, and a both historically effective and illusory and illusory paradoxical knowledge, that of the aesthetic scholar of Kant. Such a contradiction, life against life, is quite simply an absurdity. It can only be apparent. It must be a sort of provisional expression, an interpretation, a formula, a compromise, a psychological misunderstanding. So knowledge, so knowledge before truth is sometimes, is sometimes defined as the violent and wicked knowledge of the secret, the profanation that unveils, and sometimes the violent and useful knowledge that serves life, the one-sidedness that allows domination and growth. In other words, this altogether different in other words, this altogether different of violence, which acts as a framework to knowing and presents itself in knowledge, gives rise to the useless and profaning wickedness of knowing, to the pure transgression of knowledge. This altogether different gives rise to the partiality of life articulating itself and its own growth. What then, or firstly, is the nature of a knowledge not yet distorted by truth? Maybe the question itself is wrong, or rather, in putting the question, or rather, in putting the question, we again find premises that have to be re-examined. Wondering about the wondering about the original nature of knowledge is to accept that it is a certain type of relation between a subject and an object, a relation that one that wonders whether it is one of usefulness or con or contemplation of utilitarian domination or religious profanation whether it is whether it is organized according to the pure gaze or to the needs of life but does not questioning knowledge radically questioning on the basis of what it is altogether different all questioning it on the basis of what is altogether different from it leave intact that subject object relation leave intact that subject object relation on the basis of which knowledge is defined whereas it is knowledge that constitutes that relation whereas it is knowledge that constitutes that relation so one of the interesting things i was watching that video was talking about like foucault trying to separate i guess like knowledge from like subject and object relation or trying to like I need to go back and listen to it again. And he recommended an essay in it that I wrote down. Uh, what did he write down? What did I write that down? Somewhere. It's weird. I know I wrote that down. Anyways, I wrote down some essay where Foucault talked about it a bit more. That's no, really creating knowledge and or truth in the subject um, that I want to read, not on stream, but later. Now I was gonna get the title, but apparently I didn't write it down. Even though I know I did. I remember writing it down somewhere. But anyways. <clears throat> what time is it? Um, what then finally? Nietzsche says there is no knowledge in itself, which does not mean which does not mean there is no knowledge of the in itself, but in the violence of knowing, there is not a constant, essential, and pre-existing relation that the activity of knowledge is both to deploy and effectuate. 
To say that there is no knowledge in itself is to say that the subject-object relation and all its derivatives, like the a priori, object, objectivity, pure knowledge, constitutive subject, is not the foundation of knowledge, but is in reality produced by it. That is what I was talking about. That subject-object subject -object relation is produced by knowledge. I'm actually going to write that down. Um, Let us, let us clarify this. A. Knowledge rests on a network of relations. Different in their form, it may involve destruction, appropriation, punishment, domination. Different in their points of support and the terms between, wi and the terms between which they establish relations. A body, with another, a body with another body. A group with another group. An individual with a thing. An animal a god. The basis of knowledge is therefore this interplay of differences. The world is essentially different at every point. It weighs on all the points. All the points resist, and in every case, the results are perfectly non-congruent. <clears throat> the world is essentially a world of relations which are no, which are unknowable in themselves. Formless and formless and unformable world. A formless and unformable world of chaos, of sensations. And how would it be knowable since it, the world, is not the order, is not of the order of knowledge? At the root of knowledge, there is not consciousness. Thought in Nietzsche is not the is not the phenomenon to which we have immediate access in the form of consciousness. Thought is not thought is not the knowledge. That is at once and by that is at once and by the same token, the act the act which knows, and the instance which recognizes itself as knowing. Thought is itself only an effect. Thought is the effect of extra thought, not as natural result, but as violence and illusion. B. Among these relations, a group of them is characterized by the fact that they forcibly join together several differences, that they exert violence so as to impose on them the, anal the analogy of a resemblance, of a common utility or, a or affiliation, which marks them with a common stamp. This mark is a double property of allowing a utilization, of allowing a utilization or a domination, or rather of extending the first level utilization or domination. The mark is a multiplier of the relation. It refers, therefore, to a will to power of allowing recurrence, repetition, the identity of successive differences, the identification of first-level differences. The mark is the identifier of the relation. It refers to a reality. <clears throat> in a sense, we can say this will is. In a sense, we can say that this will is necessary. We can say. That in a sense, we can say that this will is a necessary foundation of this reality. We may wonder whether the activity that posits things is not alone real, and whether the action of the external world upon us is not the consequence of the presence of such voluntary subjects. <clears throat> but we can say as well that this will is will to power, i.e., more than action reaction, rather infinity of will only because there are marks which constitute things, which posit their reality. This is, how, this is how Nietzsche turns Schopenhauer's theme, will and representation, a representation which is only illusion, a representation which is only illusion, 
a single will, which is all reality. <clears throat> C. From this is constituted one the subject, which is at the same time, which is at the same time the point of emergence of the will, the system of deformations and perspectives, the principle of dominations, and what receives in return, in the form of the word, of the personal pronoun, of grammar, the mark of identity, and reality of the object. Two, the object, the object which is the point of application of the mark, the sign, the word, the category, and to which in return we relate the subject will, and to which in return we relate the subject's will in the form of the substance of the intelligible essence of nature or creation. This is why Nietzsche stubbornly refer this is why Nietzsche stubbornly refuses to place at the heart of knowledge Something like the co something like the cogito, cogito, that is to say, pure consciousness, in which the object is given the form of the subject, and the subject may be the and the subject may be the object itself. All philosophies have founded knowledge on the pre-established relation of subject and object. Their sole concern being to bring subject and object closer together, either in the pure form of the cogito, or in the minimal form of sensation, or in the minimal form of sensation, or in a pure tautology, or in a pure tautology, A equals A. Nietzsche wanted to account for knowledge by putting the maximum distance between subject and object. I'm gonna write that down in a minute here. By making them products which are far removed from each other in which can be confused only by illusion. Far from the subject-object relation being constitutive, being constituted of knowledge, the existence the existence of a subject and an object is the first and major is the first and major illusion of knowledge. The existence of a subject and an object is the first and major illusion of knowledge. Yeah, I write that down too. But what does Nietzsche introduce in place of the cogito? It is the interplay of mark and will, of word and will to power, or again, of sign and interpretation. I'm going to read that footnote, the uh, end note, I mean. Oh, yeah, so like Gilles Deleuze, Gilles Deleuze Proust and Signs. Also talks about that subject object stuff, which I'll eventually read. I've been reading through, I started reading through Deleuze's works. I think I mentioned it last time. Um, but I started reading through Empiricism and Subjectivity, which is his first book. And my goal was to basically <clears throat> read all of his books, like basically in order of when they're written. <clears throat> but I might. Maybe skip to that, or look that up a bit more. Um, uh, what does he introduce in the place of it? The sign is a violence of analogy. What, ma what masters and erases difference? Interpretation is that which posits and imposes signs, which plays with them, which introduces radical differences, 
those of the word and meaning, into the original differences of the chaos. <clears throat> the sign is interpretation as the sign is interpretation in as much as it introduces the lie of things into chaos. And interpretation is the violence done to the chaos by the reifying game of signs. What, in short, is knowledge? It interprets, it introduces a meaning it does not explain. In most cases, it is a new interpretation of an old inter in most cases, it is a new interpretation of an old interpretation which has become unintelligible and which is no more than a sign. <clears throat> I can't write. Um, I'm actually going to put it there and I think it's a poop drink. Mm. Oh, I'll rest my voice for a minute. <clears throat> There's like a whole section of like Deleuze. I need to read more Deleuze. And, uh, because I know that like Deleuze's difference and repetition influenced this. According to like the course summary, I think. So that's something I need to read. But, you know, I don't, I can't remember when it was published in like that order of his works. I might end up reading it before like earlier maybe getting the book that's one of the books I might order or, you know right now I just get them online but I might order that book and actually have a physical copy um <clears throat> oh man I'm sleepy today I ran for a run this morning and I'm all tired mm <clears throat> Mm. All right. Yeah. Oh. I will finish. So let me let me see something real quick. So there's three sections. All right. That's not very long, is it? I'm just trying to plan out like exactly what uh. Yeah, that's about it. All right. So I'll finish this. So there's like three sections in this essay. Or this lecture, and I've done the in the second one. And there's one more, obviously. Which I'll probably save for next week. So I'm going to finish this one up. And then I'll be done for this day's stream. Uh, so conclusion. One, we can see why Nietzsche speaks of knowledge as lie. The moment of the greatest lie regarding the discovery of knowledge. It is a lie in two senses. First of all, because it distorts reality. Because it is perspectivist because it erases difference, and because it introduces the abusive reign of resemblance, and then because it is something altogether different from knowledge, relation of subject to object. Far from being the truth of knowledge, this relation is, this relation is, its, this relation is its untruthful product. The being of no, the being of knowledge is to lie. Hmm. Two, we can, cite, we can see why Nietzsche says both that this primordial knowledge is something altogether different from a knowledge, a plurality of relations without a subject or object, and that, this knowledge is the, and that this knowledge is the only knowledge that is addressed to reality, every other, knowledge, every other form of knowledge being the result of an interpretive violence distor distorted by perspective, domination, and need. Roughly, knowledge in the form of relations of reality is not really a knowledge, and what we say is re and what we say is really a knowledge, and what we say is really a knowledge is lie, with regard to every relation of reality. Three, consequently, at the core of knowledge, even before we have to speak of truth, 
we find a circle of reality, knowledge and lie, which will, which will allow the insertion of truth as morality. Speaking in the most general way, such an analysis makes it possible to, to speak of sign and interpret to speak of sign and interpretation of their inseparability without reference to without reference to phenomenology to speak of signs without reference to any structuralism structuralism in quotes in scare quotes to speak of interpretation without reference to an original subject to connect up analyses of systems of signs with the analysis of forms of violence and domination to think knowledge is an historical process before any problematic of the truth and more fundamentally than the subject object than in the subject object relation knowledge connaissance free from the subject object relation is knowledge savoir and i'm going to write that down knowledge knowledge connaissance freed from once again i can't type right from is knowledge savoir all right so i am going to stop there and i will finish up the last section of this lecture i guess tuesday i'm doing that kind of tuesday thursday is my plan so Tuesday then. I will see y'all look at my mouse here so I can turn this camera off. Um I guess I will see everybody uh or anybody, somebody maybe, uh Tuesday or I hope you know people feed, watching this on YouTube enjoy it and find something interesting. I guess it's kind of like the only audiobook for this, I suppose, now. That's kind of odd. I feel bad now with like, all my random asides and stuff, but um, yeah, so thanks for watching, and I will see you later, I guess.